So we saw that the simple biasing technique uh, was um, very sensitive to beta value and beta variations. So let's look at another type of biasing technique or a biasing circuit that takes care of that problem so that we are not really worried too much about uh, the value of the beta after fabrication of the microchip. So uh, the circuit that we are going to discuss looks like this and the technique that we are going to use is called resistive divider. It's something it is based on resistive divider or voltage division of two resistors in series that we've learned in electrical circuits course. The idea is very simple. The idea is saying that imagine the, the collector and emitter side of the transistor um, are pretty much the same. On the base side, instead of having just one resistor, I'm going to have two resistors, R1 and R2. And I'm going to set my base voltage by, ratio, by selecting the value of R1 and R2 in a way that the ratio R2 over R1 plus R2 gives me the voltage that I want. Okay, But in doing this, I remember that, or I should actually note that, I have a current here, let's call that IR1, or since we're talking about DC current, let's use capital letters, IR1, and then I have a current here, IR2, and I have an IB here, the base current. And I know that KCL tells me that IR1 is equal to IR2 plus IB. But if I assume that the base current is actually quite small, assuming a very small or, in other words, negligible IB, I can say that IR1 is almost equal to IR2. Okay? And the reason that I'm saying that IB is negligible is that I know that for, for, a, for a decent transistor with a beta that is like, I don't know, 100, 200, or something like that, if IC is in the order of milliamps, IB is going to be in the order of tens of microamps. And then if I make sure that the current, if I set the value of R1 and R2 in a way that their current is going to be much bigger than tens of microamps, then I can say that, well, let's say that this is, for example, if I realize that this is, I don't know, 1 milliamp and the IB is 10 microamp, then the second current, the IR2, is going to be 990 microamps. It's not really far from reality to say IR1 is almost equal to IR2, right? We're going to see example of that in the next slide. But then for now, imagine that I can make such an assumption, right? So if IR1 is almost equal to IR2, this is the definition of two, re two resistors that are in series, right? So I can say that R1 and R2 are in series. And since they're in series, I can actually use the voltage division rule that Vx, the voltage at node x, or the base of the, which is equal to the voltage at the base of the transistor, is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vcc. Okay, the vol Vcc being the voltage up here. Okay, what's nice about this? Well, since Ve is actually is equal to zero, I can say that VBE is equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 times Vcc. And knowing that IC is equal to IS exponential of VBE over VT, then I can just basically replace VBE with this expression and I get this nice expression here. What is nice about this expression is the fact that I have a collector current that is, that is independent of beta, right? So in the simple, what is the difference between this circuit, like basically from a higher uh, level point of view, what is the difference between this circuit and the simple biasing circuit is that uh, for the simple biasing circuit, I always found IB first, the base current, and then I said IC is beta times that. That's why 
my collector current was related to beta or was dependent on the beta and had a direct relationship with beta. However, here I'm actually instead of setting the IB and then calculating IC based on that, I set the VBE, the base emitter voltage, using the ratio of these resistors. And then using and then once I set the VBE, it's almost as if I set the IC because I have set this guy, this is constant and IS is constant, so I've actually found IC. And then from here, I can actually calculate IB as IC divided by beta. Okay, so this way, my collector current, which GM and everything else is actually dependent on it, everything else in my small signal uh, and also is dependent on it, and also the saturation of my transistor is also dependent on this IC because this voltage across the resistor is going to be RC IC. And that sets my collector emitter voltage that should be greater than 0.2 to make sure that I'm in, in the active region. Therefore, IC is actually the most critical parameter that I care about in my transistor or in my transistor analysis, and it is independent of beta. The fact that IB is dependent on beta has very little importance because, well, what if IB is a little bit more or a little bit less than what I thought? As long as it's negligible, as long as it's small enough, and I'm going to talk about what does a small enough mean in a slide from now, in a moment. As long as it's small, I don't care if it's like 10 microamp or 20 microamps or 15 microamps or something like that, right? As long as I can make sure that my IC is actually quite steady and it's very well defined, then I don't care too much about IP, okay? So by using this resistive divider technique and by carefully uh, selecting, you know that based on our analysis, by now you should have realized that it is very important to carefully set R1 and R2 so that we can actually make sure that I can say that IB is very small. As long as I can make sure that IB is very small and it is negligible, then I can actually get a beta independent biasing. So beta independent Biasing is guaranteed if IB is very small. And you know that when we talk about very small, that's a relative kind of a definition of some uh, of a value, right? We have to specify what do we mean by very small because 10 microamp compared to 20 microamp is not really very small compared to 1 milliamp it is very small and compared to 1 microamp it actually it is actually very large right so we're going to talk in a in a moment we're going to talk about what does very small means but then the beta independence of the spicing technique really comes from the fact that ip is very small and it can be uh, counted as negligible 